All right, let's keep this moving. We all get chatty with each other and we get behind schedule a little bit, but we're gonna keep it rolling. Um, excited now for the bright, new, shiny objects presentations. We're gonna do a lightning round, nine minutes each. I've told all of them, at nine minutes, I'm cutting off their mics, so you won't, they won't be able to talk anymore. So we'll keep this rolling. Um, first, I'd like to welcome up to the stage, AJ Brow, CEO and co-founder of Wander. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. I love the tourism industry. I, it was love at first sight. I found out about this industry about 18 months ago is all. I didn't know what a DMO was two years ago. Um, how many of you didn't know what a DMO was before this industry, before you came into this industry? Crazy, right? Well, I think that needs to change. I think that residents, Locals need to be more involved in tourism, and that's one of the one of the ways um, that Wander can help with that. There's a lot of things that Wander Wander does. Um, let me get to is my slide up. There you go. So there's a quote in there's a quote out there that says, "If a picture is worth a thousand words, then a map is worth a million." We believe that is especially true in tourism because a map communicates things in a way that nothing else can. It communicates proximity communicates how far away is the park from the hotel that I'm staying at. Communicates where are the local restaurants in proximity to the beach I want to visit. Nothing can communicate as clear location as clearly as a map can. So uh, let me tell you a quick story. I was 12 years old and I was on a trip to Lake Powell. Lake Powell has a special part uh, place in my heart is, is the page Page, Arizona, anyone from Page, Arizona here today? Yeah, there you go. So my, my dad had, I'll tell you a quick story. Tourism has a special place in my heart. Um, my dad had kind of a rough childhood. He actually didn't have a personal conversation with his dad until he was 18 years old. Um, my great grandpa, so my dad's grandpa on his deathbed took my grandpa aside and said, don't make the same mistake I did. Go travel with your family, spend time with your family. Um, and so my grandpa had heard about this place called Page, Page, Arizona, Lake Powell. And so he bought an old houseboat. It was called the Sakushi Maru, sinking ship in, in a certain language. I don't know what language that is. Um, and they started to travel together as a family. And my family completely, my dad's family completely changed. In fact, that tradition of going to Lake Powell continued. Um, and when I was 12 years old, and I promise there's a tie into this, and when I was 12 years old, I was at a, a, on a trip with my family to this, to this place, Lake Powell, and I was using a paper map. Um, this paper map was beautiful. It was designed by a local expert. It had everything that I wanted as a, as a boater, as a traveler, and nothing that I didn't, and that's key. It was exactly what I wanted to navigate the lake, but the only problem was it didn't have GPS, and it didn't have search, it didn't have photos, it didn't have all the things that you know, I saw on Google Maps on my dad's iPhone. Mind you, I was 12 years old. So I had this idea, let's build an app for Lake Powell. I had no idea how to build an app. I'd built websites before, but I'd never built an app. Um, well, two years later, the Lake Powell map app was on the app store. And with $100 worth of homemade flyers put around the lake, put it in, in different places, places that were nice to me, nice enough to put up a flyer, we had 10,000 paid downloads of this app. Uh, this was a paid app at the time. Um, and the National Park Service was using it. It was known as the best way to navigate uh, navigate the area. Um, but anyway, really difficult to build an app, really difficult to keep updated uh, for a single location. And fast forward about 10 years and consumer behavior has somewhat changed. People don't like downloading individual apps for every destination they visit. But the need for a great map has not changed. In fact, users, visitors want an easy navigation experience more than they ever have. And a map has a big part to play in that. So, Wander, what we've decided to do, we started about two years ago, is we wanted to build a platform that let destinations do what I did for Lake Powell, but without having to write any code and deal with any of the technical headache that I had to deal with a decade ago. And so what you see here is the first part of the Wander platform. This is the Wander map editor and map builder. Um, just to give you an idea, I took the data that I had for the Lake Powell app about uh, 10 years ago and I uploaded it into Wander and had a map in five minutes, a basic map in five minutes. 
for Lake Powell. And this time, instead of just being an iPhone app, um, it could be embedded on a website or used full screen on the web. Um, it could also be deep linked to, and I could deep link to different categories and things and put it on different websites. And then it was also on, available on the mobile web. So I didn't even have to download an app anymore, scan a QR code and have a map on my phone browser with GPS, with search, uh, with everything we wanted. Or, you know, let's say I just wanted to have a QR code for the restaurants in an area. I could just put a QR code in, in just for the restaurants. And when I scan that QR code, I just have the restaurants on the map. Um, and then also, of course, we had to have a mobile app where all of these maps could be accessed by visitors and travelers all around the world for free. So the Wander app has, has thousands, of, thousands of travelers all around the world making travel decisions using these maps to travel. And so every Wander map is also available and published on the Wander mobile app. What's cool about this is places like Lake Powell, places that don't have great cell service, visitors can download these maps for free and use them offline with their GPS. All photos, everything's downloaded with it. This is especially great for international travel. Um, so here are a couple, these are, these are awesome. We have some amazing customers, and this, these are a couple things that they've said so far. Um, I am very, very impressed with how easy this product has been to use. It has been an extremely simple process for a one-person tourism department to get running. That's an example of a small, uh, a small DMO. And here's a larger DMO, Utah Valley. Usually projects like this take hours and hours of our time. This has been so easy and our map looks amazing. Um, so we have destinations all around the US um, and we soon will have multiple international clients. Uh, we've been so excited to see how ready the tourism industry is to up their mapping game. Um, so we hope that, that today and starting today, we can partner with a lot of you guys to bring maps into your marketing strategies as a destination to help improve the visitor experience and stay connected to your visitors. Speaking of staying connected, as part of this week, we just launched a new feature called Map Analytics. Um, it's more important than ever to own your own data, um, data collection and analytics uh, vehicle as a destination. Um, today, the analytics will let you let you see where your map is being used, what types of things people are searching for, um, give you an idea of when people are planning to visit, um, and soon we will have things like push notifications, being able to see when people are planning their trips, what types of things are people putting in their itineraries, um, and lots lots more. We just raised a large funding round. Our team has tripled in size in the last two uh, two months. And we are, we are ready to grow, and we want you all to come with us on this journey. So thank you so much. We're really excited to be here, and we hope to partner with, with all of you soon. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. All right, next up, I'd like to welcome to the stage Danny Guerrero, principal and founder of The Culturist Group. Hello, sharks. Hi, I'm Danny. I'm principal and founder of Culturist Group. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here at eTourism Summit. I also was here on Sunday for Thrive Connect. Um, so my story is I've been in travel and tourism marketing for over 20 years. My first gig was at San Diego Tourism Authority as an intern. Um, and um, after 20 years, I looked back at my experience and looked back at my personal journey on, in travel and tourism and realized that oftentimes the campaigns I was putting out the campaigns my clients were putting out were really lacking uh, diversity and lacking a cultural perspective. And, um, and really, as the industry as a whole was lacking the research necessary to understand what is basically a burgeoning uh, uh, growth or a, a group of, of consumers who are coming onto the stage, primarily Generation Z and millennials, uh, who are diverse, who take into consideration their values and motivators, who they are as people. So an idea, a kind of light bulb went off about uh, creating a, a travel marketing specific agency or platform to help clients, uh, destinations and travel brands be better about understanding these emerging trends, be better about uh, connecting to people and culture. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, to you, uh, I actually don't have a clicker, is this one here? Minor detail, uh, the Cultures Group. Thank you. 
So uh, I owe a, a debt of gratitude to MMGWAG Global, my former employer, um, some of you in the room, uh, for really standing up uh, when the industry needed guidance on more research for underrepresented travelers. Um, in 2018, I began speaking to leadership about the need for more research, just to start informing decisions that travel marketers could use to understand the nuances and differences. Um, and I want to applaud the agency for continuing to do this work. Uh, this, this data point here I actually is from the new uh, summer uh, portrait of the American Traveler, which is, I'm not sure if it's even out yet, but, but Chris Davidson was nice enough to send this my way. And really proving a couple of things that we know true in a diversity, equity, and inclusion space regarding the need for representation, the need to belong, the need to be seen. And an insight from this is that even though every destination in this room may not have uh, a deep diversity of ethnic diversity, uh, the point being is that marketing messages, brand messages need to reflect uh, different multicultural values and attributes to make sure that your destination, your travel brand is connecting effectively with the traveler of tomorrow. So it began, we help travel exist where culture meets brand, this idea of cultural values and motivators. And I looked a lot uh, outside of our industry uh, to consumer, uh, <laughs> to, to banking, to automotive, uh, companies who had been doing this for many years and trying to figure out how we actually, in our world, uh, find the points of connection. And what we know, obviously, and many of you are, are working on, is this idea of, of, of diving deeper into community, your own communities, uh, making sure that travel is sustainable. These, these, these efforts are perfectly aligned with what it means to be culture forward. In addition, beyond this just being a, a nice thing to do and the right thing to do, is the economic imperative. The, the research studies that are out there are showing that black travelers, Hispanic travelers are spending over 150, 130 billion dollars pre-pandemic, during the pandemic actually. You look to the work that the Black Travel Alliance is doing and Travel Unity is doing, we're empowering more and more people of color to go out and explore themselves through travel. And I think every destination and brand in this room has a, has a huge opportunity to do that. So what do we do? The idea of connecting people, culture, and message is, is, is imperative and is tantamount to what we're doing. Uh, since launching on January 31st, been lucky enough to bring on five clients of different kinds of services to really kind of lean into this idea. So people, for us marketers in the room, it's about targeting your audience, but also your community making sure that we're looking into our marginalized, underrepresented folks to make sure those experiences are coming out and being positioned accordingly. It also means DEI within organizations, uh, doing the work to make sure that everybody who works for the DMO or the travel brands at the table. Culture is really important. Um, at Thrive, I talked about the connection that Black Americans and Hispanic Americans have to music. The music is a value that we hold dear and that for us represents connections to family traditions, authenticity, which is sometimes overused and trite, but authenticity in terms of the connections that we need to have. How does your brand reflect that? How can we pivot the message a little bit from solely a leisure proposition to be more of a cultural rich message? The omnichannel strategy is super important as well because traditionally we see a lot of performative campaigns who are sometimes criticized. Uh, Black Travel Alliance called out Blackout Tuesday for uh, failing to actually show the work and now we have campaigns around Pride or Black History Month. So omnichannel and always on is really important to make sure that this is successful. So in terms of cultural forward travel marketing, a few things to note here. Building trust and growing first party data is really important. In the past, I've worked with travel brands and destinations who say, well, we've tried to do campaigns, but they're just not coming. The problem is that many of these individuals who are now uh, you know, a big part of the traveling public and have the, the discretionary spend are not seeing themselves, are not feeling welcome in those destinations. The research is showing that they continue to go to the same destinations over and over again. From a data provider standpoint, we're still working to make sure that, that data providers and research is reflective of diverse individuals. It's not always easy to get those people to answer surveys or take, you know, do research. So growing your first party data on your own channels is really key to understanding the cultural values, the experiences they want to have in your destination. It's really important to execute up and down the funnel, not just low funnel, not just travel intent. Um, it's really important to question everything. As I said, research and data is still lacking. Um, to reinforce a brand strategy, there's destinations out there who have looked at their brand and have realized that it's been 
you know, guilty of systemic racism at times. So making sure you go back and do the research for those communities that we talked about. Creating compelling, responsible, and culturally relevant messages sounds easy enough, but it is a process that we help our clients with. And then the idea of deploying everywhere, omni-channel and always on, not just during, again, certain months of the year, uh, but, but making sure that your brand is equipped to perform always. So this is a few of the services we offer. Um, I'm up to speaking with anybody we, about, about specific channel services, specific challenges you have um, for Los Cabos tourism. I assisted them uh, make better connections with black, luxury black travel agents uh, for Visit Carlsbad, California, where we're working on a multicultural roadmap to make sure that they're positioning themselves for the Hispanic family market in Southern California. And for, uh, for uh, destinations who already have uh, you know, creative campaigns underway, we're working on a multicultural brief to make sure that, that the things that their agencies are doing are on track to attract more multicultural and diverse consumers. So that's a little bit about Culturist Group. I really appreciate your time. Please follow me on these uh, different channels. Uh, subscribe. I do an email newsletter every now and then sharing some thought leadership. Um, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Next up, welcome to the stage, Dominique Olawalafe. Did I get that right? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Um, founder and CEO of Lightly. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dominique. I'm the CEO and founder of Lightly. Um, before I get started, oh, that's weird. Before I get started, we're just going to skip through. <laughs> All right, you get a sneak peek. Raise your hand if you're a parent in here. This hopefully will um, resonate with you. There we go. Uh, Lightly is a luxury baby care brand dedicated to making the getting there easier for parents towing uh, toddlers and infants. I'm not sure how many of you have ever done it before, but at least you've heard the horror stories. <laughs> Traveling with toddlers and infants is extremely difficult. The number one question and the biggest pain point on every travel blog and all these expert articles, the dominating topic of conversation in most mommy chat groups is centered around this idea of, do I really have to bring all this stuff? Or how can I travel with less? Not to mention luxury hospitality brands pride themselves on top shelf everything except baby products. So parents are left with exorbitant booking and resort fees in exchange for subpar amenities, if any at all. I'm not going to name names, but there are five-star hotels out there that are still passing out Johnson & Johnson baby products. And if you've been privy to any of the public scrutiny, you know they're filled with cancer, toxins, and pesticides. So why change now? Well, 62% of millennial parents are traveling with kids under the age of five. 2022 has actually been deemed the year of the GOAT, greatest of all trips, and thanks to COVID, people are able to work remotely. So the needs and expectations of consumers are changing. Just to give you another quantifiable reference, there were 22.5 million ticketed passengers classified as infants pre-pandemic. And that doesn't include lap infants, which is any child between the ages of zero to two years old. And I'm a lap infant mama, oops, sorry. <laughs> I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so I know the chaos intimately, but I went on as many trips with my two-year-old before they turned two because I knew I didn't have to pay for a seat. So there is a robust demographic here that is grossly underserved. So I decided, what do we do? Well, let's make life easy. We'll travel lightly. What exactly is it that we provide? We provide luxury nursery kits that hotels can customize to elevate their guest experience. What you see here pictured on the right is an image of our overachiever kit. It has enough diapering and pampering supplies to last our guests an average week. It's actually my favorite product for first time parents. All of our kits include premium products not sold at local stores because I believe parents should no longer have to sacrifice quality while away from home. We also design and sell customizable mini kits. This is the Weekender. It's perfect for those hotels and destinations whose guests have a shorter length of stay. It's also great for properties and resorts who want to offer a variety of options. We even have a welcome amenity kit for those accommodation suppliers facing budget restrictions. 
Parents appreciate thoughtful amenities and surely deserve our support. So which of your guests are most delighted by Lightly? Well, it's conscientious parents. Millennials, or I like to call them perennials, opting for lavish vacations or getaway residences, looking chiefly for unique customer experiences, convenience, comfort, and quality of service. I want to be clear in communicating our mission at Lightly. We are seeking to raise industry standards and challenge the status quo so that all hotels are equipped with basic hygienic essentials for tiny humans, not unlike ADA compliance amenities. Can you imagine having walked into your hotel room when you checked in and there being no toilet paper in the bathroom or no linens on the bed? It's no different for toddlers and infants. It's jarring. So what makes Lightly so special? Our design aesthetic is a fusion of minimalism, art, and culture. I like to think of our brand as a kid movie with adult jokes. We are shattering old parental archetypes and ushering in a new identity of what it means to be a modern parent. Parental inclusion matters. Over the next 24 months, Lightly Nursery Kits will become available at over 200 properties. We will continue to aggressively expand our hospitality network and partner with the broader travel market. Our interest is in aligning with those businesses ready to raise industry standards. We kick off every meeting with a discovery call to learn more about a property and the destination, what makes it unique, what makes it special, why it's so exciting for your guests, we use that information to create a custom product offering that reflects the property, the region, the interior decor and aesthetic. We do not require storage of our kits. Our clients pay for 100 kits up front plus any applicable customization fees. We ship and bill additional inventory as needed because the key is to elevate your guest experiences without increasing your operational burden. We also provide digital content services to help with messaging, advertising, and informing your guests pre-arrival. So what's our impact? Well, each of our kits includes a prepaid shipping label that allows our guests or any hotel staff to donate any unused products to our nonprofit partner, baby to baby Radical generosity reduces waste, and circular commerce is core to our ethos. While our digital presence is intentionally light, we do advertise via our growing kiosk network. Our machines are located at airport terminals serving at least a million passengers a year or more. Any content created in collaboration with Lightly can be displayed on our LCD screens and help attract more travelers to your destinations. Feedback from both hospitality executives and parents has been um, overwhelmingly positive. It's been tremendous to our growth. This is a comment from the Fairmont Orchid Director of Quality. With Lightly, we've seen improvement in staff morale. The service is seamless, seamless, the kits are gorgeous and easy to place in the rooms. This testimonial came from a parent, first time parents. When we had our first child, we were nervous about traveling. Lightly made it easy and stress free. When we arrived, a beautiful box with all the essentials was waiting for us. Not only did it make our bags lighter, but the products were so great that we now exclusively use the parasol diapers that were provided. If you are interested in joining the movement to help wander less families and provide that champagne and petals experience, please don't hesitate to drop us a line. Finally, I'd like to close with a video that we created for one of our clients that hopefully, hopefully leaves you fired up and inspired for the future of family travel. Thank you. Oh no. <laughs> we can email it to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Up next, Marina Petrova. And she is with um, CEO of Intentful.
Hello, everyone. Uh, I am the CEO and co-founder of Intentful, a content marketing company that leverages data and artificial intelligence to create content that is matched to customer intent. And no, it doesn't sound like a robot. It's actually high quality content that is produced times and times faster and at a fraction of traditional content marketing costs. We are based in New York City. And if you're wondering, my accent is Ukrainian. It's no secret that there has been exponential growth in the amount of content. And it's also no secret that it's been more and more challenging for the destination content or really any content to get discovered online. Attention span is shortening. We all people, customers are making decisions in a blink of an eye and it's actually a fact. Some numbers. The number of websites has doubled during the last several years and that's just websites. I'm not talking about social, podcasts, streaming and all, all other services. We are shifting between screens and devices multiple times a day, multiple times an hour. And we need to make sure that our customers can have our content in every touch point. Basically, we are entering a new phase in content marketing. You know, all of these numbers, I'm just going to skip through this slide. But this is really interesting. 94.7% of all Google queries have a search volume of 10 or less per month. Think about this. Can you afford to be producing content that will only get 10 queries, not clicks, just queries per month, possibly using the existing you know, ways how we produce content? That's the answer is no. But I don't know anyone who can ignore 95% of customers. It's just, you know, needs to change. It is similar with social media. The engagement rate has always been low, but it is now way, way less than uh, 1%. So how do we make sure that the content gets discovered? And yes, I love the slide. Uh, if we use the traditional old ways of how we all create and build content, these are most of the pains that everyone has who has ever done some content. It takes forever. It is expensive. Then, you know, there are many, many revision rounds. And then we get to the end point where no one reads our content. In fact, 91% of pages get no of websites get no organic traffic traffic on Google. So if you sometimes wonder, like no one comes to my website, you are not alone. It's almost 91%. There are many reasons for that. Some of those are technical. Some of that is content relevance. Some of that is because a lot of content is produced based on our subjective assumptions and not actually what customers are really interested in. In other words, the traditional which to create and content simply no longer works and needs to change. What we built at Intentful is a platform that uses data and artificial intelligence to match content with intent. This is a very, very oversimplified way of how it works. We start with what people actually want. It can be our data or it can be your data, a CDP if you have it or if your agency analyzes some information and we look at real time or near real time information because honestly going back to six months of and asking people questions and focus groups no longer works. So once we have that interest and intent data, then we also go to step we go to step two and we update AI for the brand and subject matter relevance. And then we have people, it's not just robots, we have people who make sure that uh, when once content is generated by AI, it is reviewed and edited by strategists, content strategists and editors. This, and I will show you in a video demo in a second, but what, it, what we have is a system that, a platform that allows to significantly reduce costs, have uh, content produced in record times and have relevant, high quality content at scale. I wish we had a little more time and I would show you way more examples, but I have one and a half case study. So the first one is AI for Broadway. Many of you know Broadway Inbound, the company uh, that is a part of the Schubert organization. We've been working with them to produce AI powered content for 27 Broadway shows. We started with intent, that's step one, to understand what people actually want, what they are interested in now, what the pain points are. We looked and we uploaded to our system millions of keywords, hundreds of thousands of questions. 
just to give you an idea, some of the questions really aren't as obvious as we people in the market and would think. So remember that 10 queries per month? When will Broadway reopen? Had almost 16,000 queries per month when Broadway was already open for almost a year. And there are lots and lots of things, lots of details like this that data can tell us. And I have a short video and I hope it will play. So this, okay, let's, okay. Yes, it plays. So this is how we use AI. I can use AI to create the block topics. So instead of thinking of what exactly would I would need to talk about, and this is not really the best example of it, and I included it that AI isn't perfect and it might take a couple of tries. So if I don't like what I generated in a second, I'll just click a submit button again, and in less than a minute, I will have another 10 versions of the block topics about Broadway shows for first time visitors to New York City, and I will probably use all of them or some of them. In this example, I was, will just choose one, and now I need to decide what to write about, and I will ask AI to do that. And not only it will be provide me with some of the ideas, but because it is trained on 175 billion parameters, it also knows the right way to structure the block so that it is done correctly. And this is an example of actually generating the copy, again, about Broadway shows for first-time visitors to NYC. I understand it might be difficult to read uh, from the screen, but it's quite uh, difficult to differentiate if it was a copy done by a robot versus if it is done by a human being. Let me, okay, yeah. Uh, and these are just some of the examples of the published content. And that way we can match what people are actually interested in with with the content that is published. Another fun thing that I actually love about this project is we were able to train the model to sound exactly like the voice of Broadway Inbound. So they provided us with 200 articles, and that's not a lot for, for, for AI, but we were able to train the model to sound, to mimic the style of Broadway Inbound, and we have seen some really outstanding results. Um, that was just one of the examples, but really the secret is in combining the human talent and artificial intelligence. We are definitely not at the age where we can delegate it all to AI, but it can really simplify so many things and, and again, cost, time, and scale. And I put together, and before I get to another video, there is one other thing. We already have some outstanding results. I believe more in results than in the process, so this is very important for me. And this is from several clients. This is average across the board. At least 30% of budget savings. Turnaround times here, it says up to five times faster. It is so much more than that. But the most important thing is because of the content relevance, we got the number of pages produced and indexed in a record time, and we continue seeing, seeing organic growth, at least 60%. And that's, again, mostly because of uh, content relevance. I have one more short video that I created for uh, the destination. And I chose San Diego as an example. I'd like to say that we don't work with San Diego Tourism Authority. I just chose San Diego as a destination. Just a couple of things of what can be done. Content plan. 30 day, I'm asking AI to create a 30 day content plan about things to do in San Diego during the summer. And in less than a minute, well, in several seconds, I get day one, day two, day, day 30. Uh, I can be more specific and I can ask to expand each of this. And yes, a lot of it will, be, will need to be edited, but it's not taking me days and weeks sometimes to finalize this. Or newsletter copy for group travel bias about the advantages of hosting a group event in San Diego. So basically I'm telling AI, I'm being very exact in terms of what needs to be done. And in most cases, I will immediately get a very good result. Or uh, let's assume I have a Facebook post and I want to turn it into a blog article. So I'm saying convert this Facebook post into a blog article, and there we go. Oh, 
Okay, and because of the massive amounts of content, it also means that we need to be able to manage it. So we built a system called Intent Click that allows us managing the process and making sure that everyone knows what's going on with the production process. We have three models of how we work. Turnkey delivery, you tell us what you want to do and we just send it to you and we upload it directly to your system. We have one click publishing with several CMS, but most CMS. Service as a software, not software as a service, uh, where we build a platform and you use it. And the third one is hybrid. I mean, we build it, we fine tune it for you, we train AI for you. And then the third one is hybrid where you do some work and we do some work. I'm here through the end of day Wednesday. If you want to get in touch, please text me or call me and happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Um, we're going to make good real quick on um, Dominique's video. So we're going to roll that real quick before we move on to the next. Awesome. All right, please welcome to the stage Richard Cutting Miller, Executive Vice President of Road Travel. Thank you and good afternoon. I'd like to introduce Road.Travel with a quick video that I will narrate if it uh, happens to play. If you're over 30 years old, That's own a home me. in the Orlando, Florida area, we're offering homeowners a new roof when they also go solar. This is me. Road.Travel has created a digital platform for curated road trips helping destinations inspire their visitors, travel brands, talk to their customers, and travel media companies talk to their readers. We've created a platform that allows the destinations to deliver their inspiration, and we deliver that on the technology side, um, helping them download and plan and book their trips to their phone, to their car, and activate the trip um, with navigation and storytelling built into the process. This couple is taking a trip from London to the south coast of England, stopping at Winchester Cathedral with literally a touch of the, the, the phone, translating the navigation to their car and the storytelling that gives them an overview of where they're visiting, what they're doing, what they should be doing on their trip. This guy has a beautiful electric Jaguar, which I covet very much. Um, so we've written this road trip to accommodate the charging needs for the car. So they'll stop at lunch and walk across the street to charge their car. So we've thought about everything associated with taking a road trip and delivering that for destinations, travel brands, and for travel media companies. I think the dog did a really good job in this, as an actor in this, this video. Let me show you, as this finishes up, what the technology looks like and why we developed it. Beautiful pictures. And the clicker is not working. Can we forward the slides, please? I love technology when it works. 
Anyway, there are four main reasons why we have developed Road.Travel. First of all, um, road trips in the United States are the primary mode of transportation for leisure visitors taking a trip. About 70, 75% of travelers use their personal automobiles or a rental car for their transportation. Last weekend alone, 39, 35 million travelers use their car over Memorial Day weekend. That's a market that we need to be talking to. We need to be serving as an industry, as a technology um, company. Secondly, um, DMOs are notorious and very strong in delivering inspiration for road trips. They deliver beautiful pictures, beautiful ideas, beautiful lists of activities that they can undertake or they, they suggest their visitors undertake in doing a road trip, but they're notoriously bad at actually delivering those itineraries. And to date, very few, if any, are actually translating those itineraries into the technology, into downloadable applications on your phone, and certainly not downloadable to your car so you can actually enjoy an in-car experience with navigation and um, storytelling included. Um, thirdly, I forgot my order of slides. Can I have slides, please? Working on it. There we go. Why? First, second, third. This is Triptych. This is what AAA produced when I was 10 years old and going on a trip from New York to Florida. AAA still produces these Triptych guides. Uh, if you're looking for the next generation of technology, look to Road.Travel because we will be working hopefully with AAA and others to convert the 1970s into 2022. If you've ever tried to plan your own road trip and create the itinerary, I've talked to guys who say, I, I produce a spreadsheet of, of places I want to visit, how long it takes to get from point A to point B, um, what the navigation is associated with that. It's a nightmare. I did this last fall on my trip to Tuscany, and I like to do it. I enjoy doing the process. Um, but a lot of people would like to have my Tuscany itinerary downloadable um, and, and, and instantly available. Um, going through this process can also be a little bit frustrating because sometimes you do all this work and you get to the end of the day and the price doesn't really reflect what you're ready to spend. Road.Travel has solved that crisis by having a budget optimizer built into the, the platform itself. So the question is, what is the opportunity here? What can we do? We're working with DMOs across the country, across the world, to help take their existing curated itineraries and automate them. Many, many have thought long and hard about, about delivering itineraries for their customers, but they haven't been able to apply the technology to make that happen. We're doing that. For publishers like Afar Magazine, Travel and Leisure, um, Frommers, they have archives and archives full of curated road trip um, content. We are able to reactivate that content, re-monetize that content, and get it out there because for the most part that's instantly available and we can deliver it and help them make money off of it again. One thing that's different about Road.Travel is we're working with the automobile manufacturers. In the next coming months, you will see Road.Travel programmed into your infotainment system of a German automaker's new car. I can't tell you which German automa automaker it is, but let's just say it's a very high-end brand. Um, so instead of ser ser seeing Sirius XM radio in your car, you will also see Road.Travel. So the 10 itineraries that you have purchased and downloaded for your trip to Florida will be sitting there in your profile, in your car, and able to activate. And then working with creators, there's a lot of um, great writers, curators, um, freelancers out there that have created and live 
by creating content. We're working with them to publish it on road.travel. The numbers are quite astounding. We only want a small piece of these numbers, but if we deliver the technology as we have done to date, I think you're gonna be very surprised at how big road.travel grows. How are we doing it? First of all, with an online platform where you can search and surf and look at destinations, the kind of trips that you wanna take, whether it's a kayak, uh, whitewater road trip, or maybe you're a craft brew person and you wanna go on a craft brew trail um, through, I don't know, Pennsylvania or Virginia or something like that. And then downloading, after you've done all the planning, all the booking, booking online, downloading that information to your phone and ultimately downloading it, plugging it into your car so it's instantly available for your trip. In order to deliver all of this technology, there are a number of pieces that we had to develop it, um, for it. The Places Guide, Roots Designer, Mar Roots Marketplace. One of our biggest investors currently is Serence. Serence is the largest AI developer and installer for brand new cars on the market. Half of new cars are powered by Serence. We're partnering with them. They are a big investor up for us um, to deliver road.travel artificial intelligence in your car. So after you've arrived at the cathedral and you've received a narrated explanation of what you should do and what you should see there, you can ask your car, okay, tell me more about the cathedral. Tell me more about when it was built, et cetera. Who's doing this? Road.travel. We spent about three years developing this technology, working with some major brands. You'll be surprised to know, maybe, maybe not, that our current largest customer to date is the country of Saudi Arabia. Visit Saudi three years ago, opened up for leisure tourism. You now have the opportunity to schedule uh, or to, to get a tourist visa to the country. Um, we have developed literally the road, dot, well, the road travel industry in Saudi Arabia to make that happen. We've had a lot of endorsements, especially on the automobile side, because the automobile industry is changing so quickly that they enjoy the technology that we're bringing to them, as well as the, the tourism side with WTO and Focusrite. We just signed our Series A funding for six million bucks, so we're off and running. That's why you've probably never heard of us until now but we have opened offices in Europe, in North America, in the Far East to roll out road dot travel to DMOs, travel brands, and travel media companies. We're hiring. This is where we want to be. We want to be the center of the universe between car companies, tourism officials, partner brands, delivering white label solutions, co-branded solutions, widgets and apps for DMOs, for travel brands, for travel media companies and encouraging them to participate in the revenue sharing opportunities that are available at road.travel. Thanks very much. Thank you, Richard. I was this close to playing my own wrap it up music for you, but. I was gonna wow. dance, but I'm really bad. <laughs> Thank you. All right, please welcome to the stage next. We have Jacqueline Yost with Echomatic. Hello, can everyone hear me? Okay, my mic is a little bit lower, so I was told to speak up. But my name is Jacqueline Yost, and I'm the founder of Ecomatic. We're a curated marketplace for local and sustainable travel. So I started Ecomatic as a blog about five years ago when I moved to Southeast Asia after graduating from my undergrad at the University of South Carolina. I had a background in hospitality and tourism management, but what the textbooks don't tell you is the negative impacts that can occur because of mass tourism. So while I was traveling around and seeing scenes like these, I decided to launch Ecomatic as a blog, as well as enroll in a master's program where I dedicated my research focus on greenwashing in the international hospitality and tourism industry, and specifically its relation to eco-labeling and unethical OTA practices. <laughs> and if you think that is a mouthful, try writing in a 100-page paper on it. So, but what I did discover during that whole process was that there's a very underserved market in the sustainable travel 
industry. So conscious travelers on one side, they're looking to really be able to find and support local and sustainable businesses, yet it can be really confusing on how to identify what is truly authentic sustainability, especially because there are over 300 eco-labels within the space. And on the other side from responsible tourism businesses, they find it really hard to be able to compete with the multinational corporations, especially being able to connect with like-minded travelers from with on their practices from an environmental, sociocultural, and economic perspective. So that's how I dreamed up Ecomatic. We are on the mission to define sustainable tourism. We feature accommodations, experiences, shops, eateries, as well as travel curators. We also partner with Sustainable Travel International to provide pre-carbon offset transport. Um, on the platform, we are actually in soft launch testing mode right now, um, but Travelers will be able to find and locate all the different businesses, filter based off of sustainability and experience amenities, and then also be inspired um, by our educational and inspirational content that is published weekly on our online dream, green travel magazine. Um, but they'll also be able to book and communicate with the businesses on there as well. But what is really what we're going after and what is the biggest pain point that I see in the industry, especially in the world of sustainability, is that there's only one global standard. So sustainability looks different in every destination, which is why we're unveiling our destination partnership model, where we're adapting sustainability based off of every destination and their local market conditions. So I think it's really unfair to compare an eco hotel in New York, say, where I'm based, um, to Dubai, or even a local B&B in the Philippines. We are actually in a pilot partnership with Dubai Tourism right now. It's a three-step approach. The first one is where we're working with their DMO to define sustainability based off of their local market conditions and the local laws. Once we have that all set up, which we're about to um, finalize, I'm going to Dubai in July for three months where we're curating all the local and sustainable accommodations, experiences, shops, and eateries, as well as travel curators and travel solutions within Dubai and the destination. We're doing in-person auditing with local consultants and partnering with Dubai College of Tourism to provide youth opportunity. And then we are going to move into stage three, where we'll be able to launch them in a community hub and support these businesses with tech booking technology, as well as custom content. Because during the auditing process, we're bringing social media influencers that specialize in sustainable tourism, specifically in the UAE, to create social media content in a green guide. So our business model, you can kind of think of us as like a eco-friendly trip advisor meets Lonely Planet style. Um, on the consumer front, we have our online green travel magazine, our social platforms, and they're the ones who are going and booking and communicating with all these businesses. But on the business side, um, we take a 10% booking or a 10% commission on each booking transaction, and then we do paid DMO partnerships. Like I mentioned, we have Dubai tourism under our belt, and now we're looking to expand. So our current monthly traction, this is all organic. We're a completely bootstrapped company. We're reaching in the six figures on our accounts on just our online green travel magazine and our socials alone. We've grown our Instagram in by almost 500%. In the past two years, which really showcases the need and the want for authentic, sustainable tourism content. And then from the business side, we have some really amazing partners from all around the world. We have about 30 businesses that we'll be launching with on our soft launch. Um, their accommodations and experiences that are really stand out in their sustainability measures. But now we're really looking to move forward with our destination partnership because like I had mentioned before, I really see the need for adapting sustainability because it's really unfair to compare destinations based off of the local market conditions. I'll skip over these, but it's not just me. I have a team, um, a really, really lovely team. They're my community. Um, we're all really just working on this mission. I have a lovely CMO who is really amazing in advertising and marketing. I have a CTO who has nine years of professional software engineering under his belt. Um, Annalise, I'll be joining her in Dubai. She's managed budgets for Apple, Pfizer, Target. She's amazing. And then Natalie, very similar to like me, has a master's in sustainable tourism, and she also leads certification processes um, specifically for sustainable education programs and adapting those. These are our advisors. They come, they're well-rounded. They specialize in marketing and advertising. 
conscious media, regenerative and sustainable travel, eco accommodation operations, and travel PR. Thank you. Um, I really just wanted to say that we are really looking to expand into the tourism market, um, especially within the US. So I would really love to talk to any destinations that are looking to implement sustainability into their strategies, which I think we all should. Um, but come find me if you want to talk about authentic sustainability and how we can work together. Thank you, Jacqueline. All right, let's welcome to the stage Taylor Pena, Senior Vice President of Global Partnerships for Social View Venue. All right, thank you so much. How's everybody doing today? Everybody hear me okay? Great. Pleasure to be up here. Uh, my name is Taylor Pena. Um, hey, Becca, are the notes available? We'll begin in just a second. while they're getting that worked out. Uh, my name's Taylor Pena, Senior Vice President at Social Venue, one of the founding members. Um, thrilled to be here, um, like I think a couple others mentioned, this is our coming out party into the tourism space. So you haven't heard of us before, but uh, we plan that you hear uh, much about us in the coming months and years. Um, show of hands, who's here on vacation? Okay, everyone's working, I got it. I should ask a better question. Show of hands, who here lives in Florida? All right, show of hands, who does not live here in Florida? Okay, that's the majority I was hoping for. Um, those that aren't living in Florida, are you guys gonna be, a show of hands, are you guys gonna be doing any fun attractions, pool time, bar time, parties while you're here? Show of hands? All right, fantastic. Um, sounds like there are some tourists here. That's why I'm dressed like this. I'm a tourist, I live in California. We're gonna Superman this thing, and we're gonna dress full tourists for this presentation. <laughs> Let's get a little more comfortable. All right. Much more comfortable. All right, so what is Social Venue? Social Venue, um, we are a platform that enables, I, I should say we're revolutionizing the delivery of emotion from your guests and tourists um, by capturing authentic customer stories um, and delivering them to the brands for repurposing efforts. I still don't see any notes, Becca, so I think it might be an old deck, but we can power through. All right, um, so with that being said, I'm actually getting a buzz on my phone right now. I thought I had maybe shut this off. However, this is pretty darn relevant. Becca, would you mind sharing my phone on the screen if possible? Nice. Man, technology is crazy these days. Unbelievable. All right. I, it looks like I just got a text message. And I should share that before I came here to this conference, I was actually on a vacation of my own. Did a little Tampa, a little St. Pete's, flew over to Fort Lauderdale, enjoyed a nice two weeks. Stayed at a few resorts. And it looks like I just got a text message from one of these resorts. Hi, Taylor. Thanks for your visit. I'm going to check them out. What are they saying to me? Taylor, thanks for your recent visit to the Sunshine State Resort. Upload your favorite video from the trip and we'll give you a free night stay the next time you stay here. Get started, click this link. Huh. Wow, now that looks like a pretty cool white labeled platform for that resort. Sunshine Stay Resort, upload your video, Taylor, and earn a free night stay. You know what, I did a lot of activities and I have a lot of videos on my phone. I'd love another free night stay. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go right into my library. Wow, there's that video of me on the boat. I remember that time, that was great. That's got their logo down there in the bottom right of the, of the video too, that's pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and submit my story. Not only did I choose this video, I can now share it with my friends. Okay. First, I'm going to text this. Hey, Mom and Dad. I had a great killer time in Florida. Come with me next time. Sent it off. 
Taylor having a blast at Sunshine Stay Resort. Huh, I'm gonna put this on Facebook. Definitely going back for vacation, who's in with me? Looks like it's got my video thumbnail there too, Taylor having a blast at the Sunshine Stay Resort. I'm gonna post it. Wow, look at all my likes going up. I've only got about 200 friends, so that's about half of them right there. Not bad. But what the heck is that asset? Taylor, going, Taylor having a blast at the Sunshine Stay Resort? When my network views this, as in this view, they can go ahead and click on it. They're gonna get taken into this wrapped asset, Taylor having a blast at the Sunshine Stay Resort. There's me and my lovely girlfriend. Let's go ahead and have my viewers watch this video. Saw some dolphins. Right on. My network is inspired. Look how much fun I had on the boat, hanging out with my girlfriend, drinking some beer, seeing dolphins, playing some great music. Not only can they see my video, but if you'll notice, there's a book now button below it. My network gets excited, clicks book now, and goes straight to your destination to complete that booking. What we've done here at Social Venue is enabled a couple things and unlocked a couple of things. Number one, all of the video that's submitted through our platform that goes out via text or email by you to a guest after they've stayed is now owned by you. It's gonna live in a dashboard, which I'm gonna show you on the next screen. On top of that, we've just unlocked social commerce for every visitor that's staying at your destination or your hotel. Every single visitor, as you know, I think we can all agree, is recording content on their phone, right? Out at the golf course, at the bar, partying with their friends, at the pool. This is content you don't have access to until right now. We built the technology for you to own it and repurpose it. With that being said, are you ready for the creator economy? What is the creator economy? Show of hands, has anybody recorded a video doing anything on their phone over the last three days? Guess what, you're part of the creator economy. Raise your hand if you shared a video on a reel or an Instagram feed or a Facebook post or texted it to a friend. Guess what, you're part of the creator economy. And you can sure bet that every single one of your visitors and resort guests are doing the exact same thing every single day, except you don't have the content, not anymore. So with that being said, 92% of consumers turn to people they know for referrals above any other source. We call this EWOM, electronic word of mouth. Unlock the door, let your guests do it for you with your brand wrapped in it with a call to action to book or visit that destination. 56% of internet users say they find out about a product from friends or acquaintances. We're gonna lead into this on this other data point, but 29% higher web conversions when UGC is implemented in a website. I mentioned that you own the content. We're gonna get into that in just a second. Here's a dashboard. Every single one of our resorts, DMOs, brands, has access to a back-end dashboard. You simply go to socialvenue.com, log in with your username and password. Every single video that's uploaded through our platform is now owned by you. Any marketing executives in here? Hopefully see a couple. These are all yours. Download them, repurpose them for whatever you like. Use them for digital ads, social ads. User-generated content, digital and social ads perform upwards of 50% better than your ads you're doing today. Use these, feed these into your website. If there's anyone in sales here, how killer would it be to hyper-personalize an SMS or a video or an email with that person's video in it from last year and get them to come back? I could go on use cases all day long and what you can do about video content but for the first time in this industry, it's yours. It's right here on this dashboard. You're also gonna notice some really cool uh, other uh, metrics here. You're gonna see 66% in keywords. We have transcription built in. You can see right there what I said to my girlfriend. Rise and shine for another boat day, right babe? That was in my video. You can segment these keywords. You can filter by keywords. You can pump these into your website to help with SEO. Um, you're gonna see right here, this is my video. Where did I share it? How many people watch my video? How many people converted and actually booked through my video? We've got all the analytics for you, okay? 
So supercharge your social commerce. Your customers, your guests are doing it every single day, whether you know it or not. Get those videos wrapped with your brand and equip your marketing team with the high-performing content that they need to do their jobs better. And it's free. You don't have to go out and produce any more video content. You don't have to go find any more UGC. Every day, you're gonna wake up with a bucket of new UGC at your fingertips to do what you'd like with. I'm here to partner with all of you guys on how to best use it. We've got tons of case studies, not so much in this industry, professional sports, nonprofits, every other business under the sun. We're excited to be here and we wanna partner with you. With that being said, we have what we call is our website plugin. All of these videos that you approve, cherry pick from that last screen in the dashboard, will feed right into your website. And as I mentioned, websites convert better when you've got user-generated content from your real guests funneling into it. You can see an example here. This is what we call our bubble view. We like to, I think Facebook and Instagram has already conditioned consumers for the little bubbles. We want to be that for businesses. So when you approve those videos on your dashboard, they're gonna funnel right into your website. It's simple code that we offer you in your dashboard, copy, paste it, showcase the best ones right there. And you better believe when I'm on your website and I'm deciding whether your resort or your resort, and I see all these videos of people having a blast at your resort, I'm gonna choose you. Not only that, I can click here, watch these videos, and book directly from it. If you have any digital displays in the venue, feed those videos to our plugin right into your digital displays as well. Lastly, we have a dashboard that tracks performance. You're gonna know, this is just a case study, 10 days, this is one of our attractions data in just 10 days. Total videos created, total visitors to the white labeled web destination, we can talk about QR codes, feel free to put those throughout your resorts to get them to scan. Users, views, overall conversions, it's a money-making machine. Just open up the doors for your guests to become the creators they already are, but wrapped with your brand and a call to action. Here's my information. I'm here through Wednesday. You can email me. Feel free to call me on my cell. We can hold a real business meeting. I don't need to be wearing this funky stuff. Um, but would love to chat with you guys here. We're candidly, we're looking for our early adopters in this phase, dirt cheap price. Love to get you guys in the door. Take my cell phone down, call me, email me, text me. It was a pleasure, thank you for your time. Thank you, Taylor. All right, last but not least. Please welcome to the stage, Vito Pagata, President and CEO of Getting Local. Hello everyone, very nice to be here. I'm excited to introduce to you Getting Local and our first of a kind technology. What we created is a super aggregator. So we go out to all the top travel sources, we clean up their content, we curate it, so visitors in your destination have an all-in-one travel guide so they can discover everything happening inside your city. The technology was created after I sold my first software company. I was traveling for business, for pleasure, and every time I visited a new destination, a new city, there was nothing to introduce me to the local flavor, the hidden gems in that destination that I was visiting. So I, I built a technology that now allows everyone to learn what's happening around where they are. We live in a digital world, especially since 2020. Similar to myself, 86% of the people coming to your destination are looking for those hidden gems, the cultural cuisine, the arts that are unique to your destination. 98% of them are searching right on their mobile phone. And three out of four bookings that happen for your restaurants, museums, activities, happen in destination the same day or the day before. And we're seeing that travel apps have more than doubled in growth year over year. And that's because consumers always choose the convenience of mobile. So we don't wave down a taxi any longer, we call Uber. It can control the time as that car approaches. We're not flipping through Zagat's, we're going straight to Open Table, where I can research a destination, read past reviews, and ultimately book accommodations. And Powered by Getting Local has replaced all of those paper brochures, the litter in the lobby that ultimately end in the landfill. So what we give to visitors in your destination is an on-demand concierge, right in the palm of their hands. We provide a simple, clean, quick, and responsive user experience. It allows them to research things to do, places to visit, 
and they want to visit a different pocket of the city, this platform can move within them. It provides all up-to-date content, so we're always refreshing the content so visitors in your destination have the most up-to-date information. Because it's smart and dynamic, as they move around the city, the app moves with them. So as they explore the different pockets, it's always reformatting itself and present what's happening around where they are. We know the importance of directions, especially when visiting a new area. So with the partnership with Google, we're able to pull in real-time directions no matter where they are. We pull in real-time authentic reviews. Now research shows that 83% of people are more likely to transact when they read past customer experiences. So our platform was built to drive revenues. Not only can you discover everything to do on our platform, but you can also book and transact in both the retail and e-commerce environment without any hardware needed. So what we do with this technology is we replicate it for your destination. We license it in both Apple and Android stores. It's fully branded for you, and we deliver it functioning in weeks. So it's customized the platform, what costs millions of dollars to produce, years of coding, and a substantial investment into research and development, we deliver to your destination, licensed in weeks. What makes us different is that we work beyond the destination. We are the largest travel guide in the US and Canada because of the way we're aggregating all these sources. So there's no software integration into your website. This is not a past program. This is not a web app that lists things in alphabetical order, that has a poor user experience that you can't transact on. This is a smart and dynamic platform that's fully loaded and aggregated everywhere throughout the US and Canada. Plus, we have API options. So if you want to really tailor your platform with just your content on the premium placement through different sources, we can accommodate that. It provides an additional revenue stream to your destination based off of the performance of the platform. So each time there's a transaction, a sale, you benefit from a revenue stream from our content partners. And with our on-demand engagement tools, you're now able to, real, to engage people in real time. So we built a self-service dashboard. You can tailor make any message to get in front of, get in front of, excuse me, my clock's not working, to get in front of the right audience while they're there. So as the app is installed, it gives that visitor an in-destination travel guide, but behind the scenes, it begins to gather insight, who they are, where they're from, what are their engagement habits, what are their interests. You can now send out a pre-programmed push alert you schedule the message one time, it automatically runs itself. So if you wanna welcome someone to your city, if you wanna deliver them to your website, no matter what you wanna deliver, we can push this content in front of those destination, new destination visitors. As you can see here in this example, we also built the technology to embed video as well, and we're seeing phenomenal engagement. So today, destinations spend a lot of money on Google. Typically, it costs $5 per click. You get no data from those engagements. It costs hundreds of dollars to get that acquisition to get someone into your territory. Um, and we're seeing that a lot of times, bots create false analytics and false leads. Websites are extremely powerful pre-visit. So before I get to the destination, this is a great tool, your website, so I can learn about all the great things to do in your destination. But in destination, your platform, apps, excuse me, websites, require multiple click-through, multiple clicks to get to different pages to navigate on your website. Social media is a powerful, powerful tool to engage with that local audience. But in April of 2022, Apple has now restricted how you gather data from those different banner ads. So all the data that we used to collect before is now gone as of April this year on um, Apple devices. And the OTAs do two great things. They drive up AdWord budgets, because most of them are going after your name on keywords, but they bring people into your destination. So 35 to 45% of hotel bookings, attractions, activities, come from Priceline, a Viator. They charge 15 to 35% commissions of the reservations amount and what they bring in, but at the end of the day, they perform for the destination. So not just having an app for your destination to check a box, but having the right app will create loyalty with your destination. First, it's going to increase visitor spend by getting in front of them, highlighting a member, an event, what you're doing. It'll show economic impact, but most importantly, it's gonna reduce those future acquisition costs because of gathering all the data from the people that came from the OTAs, whether it's a hotel or attraction. 
We can track visitor insight. Are they here as a business, a vacation, a local work? And most importantly, this has monetary value and remarketing purposes. So you've built tools for you to re-engage with those visitors and entice them to come back. Got downloads? So you already have the technology. So put a QR code on your website, in your visitor center, on your billboards. Extend the power of our push alerts to your members, such as hotels. So now hotels can promote their loyalty program, they can drive on-property revenues, the attractions can drive merchandise sales or drive TripAdvisor reviews. So the platform can be extended to your members so if someone's at the museum, the aquarium, they can engage in real time and offer 10% off the gift shop. Or in three days, we hope you enjoyed your visit to our attraction, please leave a TripAdvisor review. So above everything else, we get the data for you. So we're able to capture their phone, their email, where they're from, their insights, their engagement habits, where the app was installed, what hotel, what attraction, and there's zero opportunity of any type of data breach because everything is encrypted and tokenized on the back end. We have better analytics than Google. So 98% of the people that you choose to re-engage are going to read your message. Whether you wanna to say to a local, it's restaurant week, come in, or you want to entice repeat travel from a past visitor, 98% of the people that you choose to re-engage are going to read that message because it appears right on your home screen. 19% of them are going to click through and engage in that message, and 1% to 2% will convert or transact. And we're seeing, obviously, email, especially with how Office 365 is updating the spam filters, that it's not as effective as it was. So in summary, we white label our technology for your destination. It's customized to your needs, what costs a substantial investment with research and development, coding, staff, resources. You get to deliver turnkey functioning in weeks. It's a way for you to build and own a user database. So every time this platform is installed, because it's commercial, your app, you have access to a full database of users. You have insight on what their interests are, engagement habits, where they're coming from. And most importantly, this is effective marketing data because you're able to now understand how you wanna re-engage with those locals or visitors to come back. It provides a revenue stream to your destination based off of the performance of the platform. And ultimately, it's going to drive revenues. That's what we built as a revenue driver. It's gonna engage with the locals and announce events to let everybody know what's happening around their city that they live in and it's going, to go, it's going to engage with that past visitor and entice them to come back in. I'm very excited to introduce the technology to anybody that's interested in learning more about it. Thank you. Thank you, Vito. Thank you so much to all of our speakers today and showing us all your bright, new, and shiny. Uh, be sure to get with them separately and learn how we can continue to innovate and keep pushing us forward. Thank you. Um, we're going to roll a quick video from Samsung, our sponsor, and then we're going to move right into our last presentation of the day. Right now, everyone is saying the same things. And while they're talking about the future of advertising, the future is already here. At Samsung Ads, we're leading the way. We believe that more doesn't have to be more complicated. To us, it means quite the opposite. It means going back to basics while taking full advantage of today's technology. Only Samsung Ads has a single platform that harnesses the industry's largest deterministic data set for media targeting, activation, and measurement across every screen. That makes it easy for you to manage reach and frequency across all of your media partners for your entire buy, including both linear and streaming audiences. Samsung Ads simplifies the entire media buying process, delivering better results for your business while making your job easier. Sometimes less is more. Here's how it works.